Hello everyone, and welcome back to Manny Reed's Strange Academy number 11. It's a new little intro that I thought I'd try, see how that works. Manny Reed's comics, Manny Reed's title of comics. I think it sounds pretty good so far, maybe I'll keep using it, you let me know. Anyways, Strange Academy number 11 is a classic whodunit, and I love it, it's great. Um, I figured out the ending within the first three pages, and uh, I just feel like a detective i feel like the guy from knives out i feel like the guy i feel like uh sherlock holmes but then i'm also thinking maybe it just wasn't that hard of a mystery uh but either way let's get let's get to it this starts at 5 33 p.m and toth and i think her name is Slee? shaley there you go shaley Toth and Shaylee are um, studying for the finals that are coming up. We are still in school. This is an academy. And uh, around 5.30, this is when Shaylee finishes her study. She asks Toth if she if he wants to go out and get some food. Um, he doesn't really talk. and um, But, you know, I, I guess they figured out a way to, to communicate. But she leaves him. A couple hours go by. He's still studying. A couple more hours go by. He falls asleep. Next thing you know, it's midnight. He gets up. He leaves. So the last people to see him alive is, I think it's either mindful or mindless. I think it's mindful. But it's like that huge obelisk kind of looking thing. Uh, there's a couple of them all over the academy. And then the last, also the last person was Shaylee. Um, but Shaylee is his girlfriend. So it's not really a, a prime suspect unless, what a twist, right? Um let me uh, pedal back real quick, though, to the cover of this. If you're listening on Spotify, the cover is Toth completely shattered on the ground. Uh, and it's just um, the title saying Strange Academy, who shattered Toth, you know, and a question mark, exclamation point. It's a pretty good cover. And it does have to do, uh, do it does, sorry, it does deal with the uh, the issue and what what happens in the issue. So moving forward to Toth leaving the library as soon as he's le he leaves uh, we see this dark speech global and it says um, something along the lines of you're studying extra late tonight or you're you're out past your dorms too late at night and then you just see Toth screaming and the next morning we see a couple of girls walking to class talking about the finals which what what were they studying and stuff they turn the corner and Shaylee is the first to see Toth completely shattered. Uh, she screams, and um, you know, obviously everyone is is scared now. And uh, we immediately move on to all the pieces of Toth on like a, um, a I don't want to say a stretcher, like in a bed, kind of like in a morgue. I forgot. I don't know what those uh, beds are called, but we have Voodoo standing over him with Cat Beast. Now, Cat Beast does say um, we're in luck because he is part crystalline, uh, which means that he can just be put back together. All you need is the pieces so that we can put him back together, and it's no big deal. It's at this point I find Cat Beast a little suspicious. Um, I don't know. He's just been suspicious since we met him, and the fact that he knows this, even Voodoo questions it. It's like, how do you know so much about this? Uh, and he's like, you know, I know a little, a thing or two about resurrection. So, at this point, I am suspicious of him, but I don't think that Cat Beast did this. Um, and when he says this, uh, that, that we can bring him back, that's when Toth's mother and father come in. I, I can't believe I didn't put this together. I noticed the similarities between Toth and um, Man Beast, but I didn't. I, did, I just didn't put two and two together, and I didn't realize that was his father. Unless that's not Man Beast. I'm not 100% sure. So if you know for a fact, let me know. But I, I think that is Man Beast. I don't think there are many creatures in the in the Marvel Universe that look like Man Beast other than Toth. And uh, his mother is Queen Glither. Blyther. I don't know. I'm going to say Blyther. Um, and she reveals that Cat Beast is actually... A wizard from her world, weird world, named, and I'm about to butcher this, but uh, it's either OGOD or OGOD. 
probably OG just because of the fact that it has to do with like crystals and stuff. But it's O G E O D E. So I'm gonna say O G O D because O G O D <laughs> sounds weird. Um, but he, yeah, he's a wizard that got caught doing some bad things and was exiled, and now he's a cat beast. So that's yeah, a little that's a little weird. So she doesn't really trust him. He kind of gets angry at her for calling him out. Man beast grabs him by the neck. And that's when Voodoo has to come in and she's like, "Hey, everybody, relax. We need to deal with what's at, what's the situation at hand." Toth is shattered. We need to fix him. Um, so that's when the mom says, I hope you like puzzles. And Shaylee comes in, rushing in. She says, I'm a friend. Mom immediately realizes it's not just a friend. Um, Toth has been talking about her. So that's that's a sweet little moment. But they spend the next couple of hours, I'm going to assume hours, uh, putting Toth back together, just you know, pieces by piece. And by the end of it, they realize they're only missing one piece. And you may have guessed it, but it, he's missing his heart piece. So without the heart beat piece, Cat B says that it's impossible to do this this ritual or this spell to bring him back. Um, now, Queen Bly Blither, she suspects foul play. At first, it was she's seen this before. He um, he was swinging from a vinyl as a young kid one time, and he broke his leg. They put him back together. No big deal. But now that the heart piece was intentionally stolen, she knows that there's some foul play happening here and she wants to know what happened. And Voodoo says, no, we got this, it's under control, we called an expert and at the right perfect time, uh, the expert shows up and it's Howard the Duck. And this is the first time I've ever read anything with Howard the Duck, so I'm not sure how to read him. Is he gonna be talking like those noir style uh, detective films or anything like that? That's how I read him. <laughs> so. I don't know if I'm wrong there, but that, that's what I did here. Um, but he comes in, he introduces himself. He says, I want to talk to the kids. Um, and this is where it gets pretty uh, who done it, right? So the very first kid that they talk to is Calvin. And Calvin is my main suspect here at this point. He's been in the last couple of issues he's been shown to have like a dark side he had he was revealed to be an orphan on parents day and that that showed a, a dark side you know he and he like got black eyes and everything he had like some bloodlust but he calmed it down um so that that right there was pretty suspicious but the fact that here when howard the duck is questioning him He's not taking anything seriously. He says, I want my phone call. Uh, I want to talk to my lawyer, things like that. And he's like, hey, I was just sleeping. Uh, and uh, my roommate, Alvi, can, can testify to that. Um, so Toth, or not Toth, uh, Howard brings in Alvi. And Alvi uh, confirms. He's like, yeah, he was definitely the only one sleeping because that's how he sleeps. He sleeps like that's what he was meant to do. He snores. Um, they show like a little flashback where he throws a shoe at him. He conjures up a shoe and throws it at Calvin. Uh, it's pretty funny. But then it goes into, you know, just the interrogation scene with a bunch of different people. We have Eric who blames Doyle and for no reason, just to be an ass. You know, he, <laughs> him and Doyle have some kind of relationship going, a love hate. And um, it, it actually surprises me that he's blaming Doyle like this because Doyle is holding something over his head with the information of who his mother is, um, which still hasn't come into play in any kind of form. Doyle was with Eric all night, and it's confirmed from a video that, that Eric um, uploaded. So they're, they're fine. Herman is the only one that seems upset. There's a bunch of people being asked questions. They all have an alibi. I was studying. I was sleeping. Herman is the only one that's like, I hope Toth is okay. He better be okay. He has to be okay. So uh, there's something maybe going on there, but it's not suspicious in the fact that I think it was him. It's suspicious. I'm like, what's going on with them? Uh, does the one hold a secret? I don't know. Something's going on there. Uh, and then I realized as I, cause like the whole page is like nine different kids being questioned. I realized that I didn't know who three of those kids were. So in the front of the book, you can see, a list of the main characters you got um, Calvin, Herman, Toth, Alvi, Eric, uh, Shaylee, Desi, Zoe, 
this is off the top of my head, so I'm pretty impressed by myself right now. Anyways, and the last one is um, Gus. Yeah, I think that's his name, Gus. He's obviously the the uh, the giant. And this guy, that his excuse was I was on Witter, not Twitter, but Witter, and you know just fighting somebody online. He didn't look like anybody I've ever seen. Then I realized going back, there's a girl with or girl or guy with green and black hair. I didn't know who that was. And there's a wolf kid. It's at this point that I realized this is an academy. And even though there is a, a main set of students protagonist, it's an academy. So there's a bunch of people at, at this school. So I'm not gonna know everybody. And but that was a little weird at first. So Howard the Duck has been trying to find clues. He, he's questioning everybody. Everyone has a solid alibi. Uh, and then he's looking at a picture of the crime scene with Toth completely shattered still. Um, he's questioning, or not questioning, but he's uh, making a remark on how nasty this would have been if he wasn't part crystalline. And as at that moment, he realizes or he, he finds a clue in that picture and then so they go back to the scene and sure enough that clue is still there there's a pin and uh, voodoo says yeah no those pins are pretty popular so uh with the kids today so obviously right there definitely one of the kids that did it um but howard the duck takes it a step further and he remembers that calvin was wearing a jacket full of pins like his whole one side has nothing but pins and it's missing one and then we go to the next scene and it shows the missing spot Calvin talking to somebody else, asking about food, which brings me back to when he was being questioned. Um, he was asking about food in that uh, scenario. He's just like, I'm really hungry. And Howard the Duck did point out, you were eating when I called you in here. You were eating breakfast. So it, it was, I was thinking that was supposed to be like a funny quip, whatever, but it is a callback to what's going on here. Because at this point, in present time, Calvin is talking to... Uh, Alvi, I believe, and or Herman, doesn't matter who he's talking to, honestly, but he's mentioning how he's hungry and how he just ate, but he's still hungry uh, nonetheless. And that's when Shaylee comes in. She's sad. She lets the whole class know Toth is technically okay, but his heart piece is missing. Therefore, um, he can't be brought back yet. Um, at this point, Doyle or Eric blames Doyle. Doyle blames Eric. They start fighting it out. And Shaylee, this is the first time I've ever seen her in a bad mood other than, you know, last issue when she started like a bar fight. But she yells at them, says, this is not about you. Stop making every situation about you. They agree. They apologize. It's at this point that Calvin reaches it in his pocket, in his jacket, and he feels the crystal heart piece. But he's confused. He he didn't grab this. He this is not his crystal heart piece. He didn't he didn't do this. What's going on? So he puts it back. But somebody saw it. I forget who. But they they, they read him out immediately. Like, Calvin just put it back in his jacket. He it's him. He did it. And he starts freaking out. And he's like, No, I didn't do this. I would never do this. And he starts to lose control. And it's at this point that voodoo rushes in and he says calvin i know what's wrong i know what's going on i know you, that you didn't do this but it's too late basically um calvin has lost control calvin is is his eyes have been um shaded in in darkness uh his jacket there's no longer pins but there's just a bunch of eyeballs and he says get back or i'm going to hurt you i don't want to hurt you and voodoo gets just one step too close calvin knocks him over to the wall and uh then it shows him uh, uh it shows calvin in full like just a full view of him and it says something about misery and i don't know if you guys read this but in dr strange i think it's jason aaron run jason aaron's run you can uh check me on that but it's his 2015 run where Doctor Strange loses his powers. 
and um, basically there's a uh, there is a story arc where he no longer has to sacrifice something to use magic in order to use magic you have to kind of give something away from you you know there's give and take give and take well there was a point where dr strange wasn't doing that and we didn't know how no one in the uh, magic community could understand how he was doing that and it turns out he was actually just feeding that price to this thing called misery and eventually it obviously um blew up in his face and they took care of it but it was never actually truly taken care of and now misery is back it's a great callback i love it this this issue here is 8.5 out of 10 for me uh because of the return of misery uh completely forgot about that guy but it is it was like a loose end um i love the whodunit aspect of this of this uh issue and this is a plus and a negative but it it was only one issue long so it's a positive in the fact that it's not being dragged out who done it who killed toth you know but also maybe i would have appreciated two issues of this um but no everything is revealed everything is investigated within this one issue still i mean obviously we don't understand how misery is back or what calvin could have done to bring misery back or how it infected calvin in the first place but the fact of who shattered Toth, that question is answered. It's done. We're moving on to the next story, which is how can we stop misery? And for me, that's that's great. I love this issue. This is a this is a really good issue. And it really gets the ball rolling. Um, I did figure out that it was Calvin, but of course I was wrong also because it wasn't Calvin. It was misery. It's just Calvin. It's always in the. <laughs> in the in the middle of everything he was in the middle of the very first issue where he got kidnapped um he was in the middle of well honestly this is the, it's the only thing i can think of that he was done but he's he's just been a pretty primary um character in this so i just assumed it was him and especially just because of his lackadaisical attitude when being questioned it was just too good to be true so maybe i'm not sure like maybe it was just an easy uh, mystery but nonetheless i loved it this is a good issue if you missed it go pick it up and uh if you aren't reading strange academy and you still watch this you should go go read that either way thank you for watching make sure you subscribe make sure you follow on spotify all those awesome things that you can do and uh yeah thanks for listening thanks for watching yeah